In this lecture, we'll look at rule-based block diagram reduction. In the, as a first step, we'll look at all the rules of block diagram reduction. The first set of rules allows to simplify patterns of uh, block diagrams, so common patterns. So this pattern is a classical canonical feedback with G in the forward direction and h in the feedback direction this can be reduced to a single block which is equal to g divided by 1 plus gh that's the transfer function similarly if you have two blocks g1 g2 in series then this can reduce to one block whose transfer function is g1 g2 if you have two blocks in parallel like so, when I say parallel, they both receive the same input, then this reduces to a single block, like so, with transfer function g1 plus g2. Now we'll look at moving summation points. We we'll look at this configuration now. Let's say I want to move this summation point for some reason ahead of this block g somewhere here. Now for this this movement to be correct the ultimate output y should not change so here this output is g times r1 minus r2 so if i move the summation junction here the output should still be the same now let's look at what we need to do let's look at this configuration naturally when you move the summation point something has to be uh, put in here transfer function let's say we just put a one right here and if you look at the uh, output now it's going to be r1g minus r2 which is not the same as before for to get it to the same output as before you need to put in a g there and therefore you get r1 minus r2 times g as the output once again so when you move a summation junction to the front of a block then the path should get multiplied by the transfer function of the summation block similarly if you want to move a summation block behind a transfer function like so you would need to multiply by the inverse or 1 divided by the transfer function. Similarly, you can move pick off points. So you have pick off points like so. Once again, the output sh shouldn't change. So let's say I want to move this pick off point from here to here. Currently, the output is R1 and if I move from here to here the output shouldn't change if I move it like so now we have to figure out what do we need to put in here so that the output y2 equal to r1 if this is just 1 then this output is going to be r1 times g but what we want is just r1 therefore r1 times g divided by g will give us r1 so this transfer function should be 1 divided by g. So if you move a pick off point to the front of a block then that signal should be multiplied by 1 divided by the transfer function. Similarly if you want to move a pick off point behind a block like so then you would need to multiply that signal by that transfer function. Let's look at this problem. This is a fairly complex problem. You have G1 transfer function here, two pick off points. So one signal goes like so here, one signal goes down here, then gets added up to a signal that's drawn from Y. How do we do this? Now, the solution I'm going to provide is not unique. There are several ways of doing this. I'm just going to look at one that came to my mind. You have to be a little bit creative about this. Now, let me focus on this. This 
area this looks like a parallel block so you have this going forward through G2 and this wire just going by itself so same input two paths end up in a summation block and going forward out so that can be parallelized parallel block so that will end up being G2 plus 1 you just add the transfer function by the way the transfer function of a wire is 1 now let's look what else can we do what about moving this pick off point from here to here from here to here if I do that like so then that signal get needs to get multiplied by the transfer function that's what I've done here and this is the configuration now let's focus on this area here that looks like blocks in parallel again so this is a plus and this is a minus therefore it end up, ends up being this block now if you look at this region this one right here what does that look like that looks like a canonical feedback g divided by 1 plus g h if you do that that's what the transfer function is and then this remains as is like so now these can be done in series they are in series so just get multiplied like so and then you can reduce algebraically reduce the formula to this that's the end